Step one, where to download it for free, legally. All right, first of all, you'll want to go to elderscrolls.com. Pick your language of choice, pick your country of choice, enter your birthday, go up to the games, go down to Arena right here, and see where it says download the full game. Click that. DOS box. So you're going to want to click that, open that up in a different window, go ahead and accept, which will prompt the download to begin. You'll need to install both Elder Scrolls 1 Arena and DOSBox. It'll come up with two files, a PDF that'll explain how to set it up, and the actual executable. Next, you're going to want to go over to that window that had DOSBox, and go ahead and download the uh, latest version. So just click on Downloads over there. Windows. You're going to want to double click on Arena going to prompt an installation directory. Make sure it's a place that you know and you can get to easily. Probably something like CES1A for Arena. Easy peasy. Run DOSBox and follow the instructions to start the game. Once DOSBox is up and running, you're going to want to create a drive for the program. You're going to have to do this every time you open DOSBox. So just mount C. We are creating a C drive. Now what are we going to create the C drive for? For the directory that has the game. In this case it's going to be C drive ES1A because that's where we installed it to. So from now on DOSBox is going to think that ES1A is actually the C drive. So we go into the C drive by typing C colon and now if I do a directory listing we have the arena folder right there where it installed. So we type CD for change directory arena and now we're in the arena folder. At, from this point dirt simple just type arena to run the program. Elder Scrolls Chapter 1 The Arena the Best techniques are passed on by the survivors. How to play the game. It's harder than you think, and the controls are horrible. Just hit escape to get to the menu, and we can start a new game. DOSBox is emulating a shitty old PC. Here's how to fix that. Here's where we begin. You may notice the game being laggy as shit. If this is the case, go ahead and hit control, and hit F12 repeatedly. You're going to see on the top of your DOSBox window the cycles will increase. What this is, is the emulation speed. By about 18,000, you're going to be running at what people consider normal. Here's a listing of the controls. The first thing I recommend on doing is shooting yourself in the head. Because the controls fucking suck, and there's nothing you can do about it. Seriously. You might be able to remap them with a separate program, but by default, just using the tools that you're given here, you'll have to use the arrow keys to move around and you'll use the mouse to click on and do things. For example, click on this. Use your fists by holding the right mouse button and swinging. Put down your fists. See the key. Click on the key. You have the key. Use the key to open the door. Pretty much all your menus can be quick accessed with the F1 key. It'll tell you about your character. Hit next. You'll see your equipment. You can click on it to activate it. Uncheck it to deactivate it. This pile here. Right click on it to get information about it. Damage is 2 to 14. Right click on the broadsword. 1 to 12. 2 to 14 is better. So I'm going to equip the iron longsword. You'll see a goblin down there. Keep in mind, just like in Daggerfall, Actually hitting them has a casual relationship with doing damage. Now for little areas like this, you see where there's a waterway? What you can do is you can hold shift and hit J, and you'll jump over it. By clicking on the snake icon, you're going to be able to tell where you are, what time it is, and your health status. Poisoned or uh, diseased will show up here. The journal pretty much tells you what your current quest is. M is the standard map. 
you can actually click anywhere on the map and type this place sucks and from that point on that option will be there for you you can click on the exact same spot again and delete it if you want you have gained a level of experience you simply assign your stats as you see fit you'll find that after leveling up and resting Rhea Silmane will come to you again and explain your mission to obtain the Staff of Chaos. This, the pieces of the staff are in every province of Tamriel. So you're going to have to go to Skyrim, Morrowind, the Somerset Isles, so on, so on, so on, until you visited every province of Tamriel to finish the staff. Then and only then can you go to the Imperial province and beat the game. Eventually, you will find the Shift Gate. It is located in the bottom corner of the dungeon. This, my friends, is called copy protection. It's the earliest known version of DRM. They were using this in several games, including Warcraft. So, what you have to do is you literally have to go and look at your manual and find the answer. Or in this case, go to that PDF file that came with the game. Scroll all the way down, you're going to see copy protection. And you'll want to just, uh, let's see, Ariel's bow, Ariel's shield, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Cure poison. So we put in 350 there. The copy protection is released, and we are free to be in the game. Typically, the game is going to want to put you in your home province. So in this case, I will be in Skyrim without fail. When I hit the M button, we're in Emberguard. One of the classic cities of Skyrim that did not make the cut into the final game. But don't worry, 13 Orange has fixed that for us with Elder Scrolls Places Ambergard on the Steam Workshop. You'll notice that Ambergard, along with all the cities in Skyrim, including Riverwood, are fucking huge. Now every once in a while at night you will be attacked by little rodents and other creatures. Further on in the game, when you start getting noticed, he'll actually send battle mages and crap after you. So, it's not really safe to be out at night. You'll want to find an inn to rest your head. When you're ready, right-click the map icon on the bottom of your screen, and it will open up the Empire of Tamriel. You can go to any province you want. For example, Skyrim over here. We can go to Dawnstar, Winterhold. Now, what's interesting is that uh, towns like Riverwood It'll take 17 days to reach there, distance of 820 kilometers. You should arrive by. Isn't that amazing how big the game was? You can actually run from place to place, too. It'll just take you pretty much that long in real life. The Somerset Isle has been fully fleshed out, as has High Rock, Hammerfell, Balinwood, Elsewhere, Black Marsh, and Morrowind. Not just the island of Vardenfell in the middle, but all of Morrowind. So, if we go to Skyrim, we go to Riverwood, travel there, you're going to notice something. The first thing you're going to notice once traveling to Riverwood is that the place is fucking huge. This is a gigantic city. How the fuck did Riverwood become this shitty little hovel? What, did it get burned down in one of the wars or something? It, I don't know. It's only been 500 years. Whatever. The point is, at this stage in the game, you're free to go wherever the fuck you want. You can go to a blacksmith and sell your shit. You can go to an inn and sleep. You can get quests in the inn. You can do all kinds of things. There aren't any complicated mechanics like reputation, really. They, this is just a very basic, basic Elder Scrolls game. It's the beginning of the series. And I hope that through this guide, I've helped you be able to get started.